Good Saturday morning to everybody. It's time for your next chapter of production of The Heights at Avery Heights, a one-of-a-kind senior living community centrally located near the most entertaining and historical spots in Connecticut. Now, this show is dedicated to empowering older adults with helpful resources, ideas, inspiration, tips to encourage them on their life's journey. Our production is also dedicated to the younger generation so they can better understand how to develop greater communication and enjoyment for those elders in their community. Uh, along with Siobhan Seffarelli, I'm Gary Byron. Siobhan is a senior living specialist over at the Heights. Good to see you. Good morning, Siobhan. Good to Siobhan. see you. How um how was your week? My week was awesome. Of course it is. You yes. know, every time I ask you that question, <laughs> it's always awesome. I gotta start hanging out with you. I want awesome weeks. <laughs> I do. I went to go see Ant Man and the Wasp. Really good. Oh, that's out already. Yes. Ooh, I haven't heard that yet. Very from good. My it's little guy. Supposedly this is Phase Five for the whole Marvel universe, and it's pretty cool. Did you see the uh the I think it came out about a year ago the Spider Man that came out a, yes. a year ago yes far is that far from home or welcome back home or uh, yes I did see I it was though. great yes well this is really good too and and the Spider Man didn't they have like all the all the actors who portrayed Spider Man yes that's all, what made it really good, yeah right? wasn't that Toby really McGuire. awesome and actually my favorite and I don't know his actor name but the second one the one with the black hair that's my favorite actually oh uh, is that Christian Bale Andrew Garfield oh you know Andrew, Andrew Garfield, Garfield is yes. the one right now I think. He's the, the he's the new no. no there's no, already no. a new Spider-Man. Oh my yeah, goodness! Yeah, Look at no, this. the new one's the younger kid. Yeah, but I like the middle one. Thank you. What yes. is it? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Yes. You can hear Jimmy J, the producer in the background. Tom. Yeah. See, I don't know him. In yeah. fact, it's I have to confess, it's the only Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. But, but I did know. What? I I was aware of the other. Let me tell you this. What? I I've never seen. I think a, that was like three. Spider-Man three. I've never even seen a Stop. Batman movie. I thought you were gonna say you didn't see the Avenger movies. And if you do, I have to leave. And I'll come back when you've seen them all. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, Lisa and I will leave. I may, I may have seen I may have seen <laughs> one. And in, in, in the last, like for me, Superman, it will always be Christopher Reeve. Superman. I, I, I know. Christopher, what? I, Where are I'm, you? I'm, I'm <laughs> 53 years old. Here, what do you mm -hmm. expect? I'm older I, than you, and I would never quote that. I, I didn't say Superman. George Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't say that. I didn't say Adam West. That's right, I was gonna say Adam West. Yes. Oh, well, those were really funny though. Remember, bam. Yeah. Those were hysterical. Yeah. The, the graphics yes, on. Of yes, course. Those they were don't... the best. Yeah. But somebody, I, I saw a commercial. Was it during the Super Bowl? It was just recently, or the Indy, or the Daytona 500, or whatever. I, I thought I saw uh, Michael Keaton. Is he? Is he? Port he's re oh, is he coming back? He's as coming back as really? Batman. He was good as Batman. I like all right, hold, name, all right, before we go out, really quickly, who, who's all the Batman? There was Michael Keaton. See, I'm a Marvel girl. Not George a Clooney. Girl, so I can't help. Oh, and then uh, uh, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck? Was yep. that all? And the guy from... Um, I didn't know that. Oh, gosh. The guy, Christian... What's his name? Chris, Christian, Bale. Christian, Bale, Christian Bale. But the other one, the Val one that... Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Oh, Val Kilmer. Yes. Right. Look at this. Is that it? The one with the vampire movie. He He's one, too. The vampire movie. Interview with he, a vampire? He was just the, um, oh, no. he's the latest one. I can't think of his Good name. Good Lord. Now we're going to get phone calls and emails. I know, but <laughs> oh he was. Goodness. He was just it too. He's, he just played Batman. Oh, oh the, the latest. Oh. The last one, yeah. I, I'm wrong. The I should. Vampire movies. You know the wrong mm -hmm. I gotta ask. No? Okay. Speaking of which, we've we had a guest here this morning. Why don't <laughs> we. What's our topic today? Uh, why don't we. I know, right? <laughs> She's like, oh, I don't know anything about this. Uh, uh, why don't you introduce our guest and, and, and we'll get into uh, what our, our topic All right, of discussion is. Marvel first. We have to start there. Oh, Marvel. Okay, good. See, now yeah, I, no, now I'm, I I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Um, so, this is the wonderful uh, Lisa Marshall. She wrote an incredible book. I think I can hold it up. Can I hold it up? This is uh, called Oh, Hello, Alzheimer's. Um, and it's an incredible story. I actually had uh, the great pleasure of uh, reading it, um, and I'm looking forward to having her actually come to our community at the Heights uh, to meet with some of our residents and maybe to speak at our caregiver support group. Um, all the time we have, unfortunately, folks that kind of uh, face what she faced and, and faced it amazingly yeah. uh, with grace and dignity. And what I always love is someone who takes that pain and makes it into something amazing to help other people. So I'm very honored uh, Thank to you. meet you. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks for being here. You know, I, I just want to piggyback on that last statement because – Quite often, regardless of the situation, you know, you, you sit there and say, what good can come of this? And you sit there and say to yourself, nothing, no good. 
No good. How can any good come from this? Um, but the truth of the matter is there's a book here mm-hmm. that was written by our guest this morning. And um, while it's probably a book she never thought she would ever you know, write or even mm-hmm. ever wanted to write, if there's somebody that can take something away by reading this book and help them, mm-hmm. then... Look, I'm not. I want to. I'm not here to sugarcoat any of the, you know, what you had to endure with your loss. But at least it's a, l- a tiny smidgen consolation of knowing something slightly did, you know, uh, favorable did come out of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, your husband Peter. I'm I'm a little familiar <laughs> myself uh, of of your background, but maybe for the listeners here, just hearing this for the very first time. Uh, before he became ill, and, and maybe the history of your relationship, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. So we met in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. Peter grew up here in Connecticut. And so we were neighbors, married to different people. We were together for five years, or, or you know, neighbors for five years. And then Peter got offered a job in Hartford. And hey. so he moved away with his family, mm-hmm. and I stayed in Harrisburg. Um, we lost connection. We didn't talk for a long time. And then we reconnected later. When we reconnected, we were both divorced. And so we were 326 miles apart and began a romantic relationship, which lasted eight years years long distance so oh. every other weekend we would drive this yeah we had an, we had a beautiful connection and so that's how we met and then eventually in 2009 when my last child went to uh, college I sold my house and transferred uh, to Hartford and we got married and lived happily ever after until we didn't right. You don't hear too many, uh, too often people moving into Connecticut <laughs> from out of state, but uh, that's a conversation for another day. Um, but tell me about maybe your journey into the world of Alzheimer's and really uh, the tough decision that I'm sure you had, to, that you were pressed upon in order to write this book. It's entitled, Oh, Hello, Alzheimer's. Um, where, did, for, oh, where did you get the title? And, and tell me about your journey to, to writing this book. Have you ever authored anything before? Or was this a book that was always inside you that wanted to come out? I was a co-author in a Chicken Soup for the Soul really? book. Yeah, yeah de- Navigating <laughs> Elder Care and Dementia. So that was my first kind of dipping my toe in. Um, and then I wrote the book. But the title came from, I author an international blog by the same title, Oh Hello Alzheimer's. And it just came to me because who who expects that when you're 53 years old to get handed a death sentence, yeah. you know, an Alzheimer's diagnosis so young. So I was like, oh, hello, Alzheimer's. Now I need to do some research because I literally knew nothing about it. This may be a tough question, but I'm going to ask anyhow. Um, let's go back to the very onset of mm-hmm. discovering that your husband had some memory loss mm-hmm. because and and I'm 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 just going to shoot from the hip here it it can be and don't misinterpret this it can be kind of funny at first you know it's like you know oh you you mm-hmm. know you, you you never you can always remember that your childhood things you could tell me what you did in your senior year in high school but you can't tell me you know oh what you what you had for dinner last night and we're not even, we're just being goofy, not even realizing that there's something going on here. Mm. So when did you first realize that your husband started to have some memory loss? You know, it's the things that we do as we get older. We walk into a room and we think, what did I, what did I why did I come in this room? Or you forget your keys. You yeah. go out to the car, yeah. you don't have your keys. That's you I'm forget your about. wallet. Those, wallet. Yeah. All those things that you can just explain away, mm-hmm. right? That's how it started. And then it progressed to um, he was losing his bank of words and his vocabulary. So he would start to describe things rather than use the word. So, you know, the thing we get on when we go to visit our son and we take our, you know, luggage, he was describing the word airplane, but, you know, he had lost that word. So that was happening more and more often. But we were at a time where we were planning to retire early. We, Our goal and our sights were set on the age of 60. Sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so we thought we had, you know, everything in line. And then at, at 53, we were handed the diagnosis. So 
um, you know, th- the way that it, it transpired for me to take him to the doctor was friends and family started to notice, and they would pull me ins- aside. You know, and these are the brave friends who are kind enough to say, something's going on here. And so now I was accountable. I was accountable to Peter and to myself to get a diagnosis. Lisa, mm-hmm. I got a follow-up question to that, but I want to move this over to Siobhan right now. Be- we, with memory care mm-hmm. that the Heights offers, is her story pretty typical is that yeah. normally how this happens where you know people are forgetting their keys or you know where where did i put my phone um mm-hmm. or you know or and then verbiage word language yeah, um most is, definitely is that and, what you see yeah and i think too we were talking uh before the show that unfortunately we have a lot of that the husband and wives too where unfortunately that you know spouse has to go into our uh memory care um and it's sad we've had over the last after christmas we've had three of those um and they're fairly young i mean they're like in their 70s uh one of them was a uh, person that was part of a, a big law firm um mm-hmm. and so it's really sad to see and it's uh you know you you're, you're in your office and you're you know talking about going into memory care and i'm doing my normal you know kind of explanation and unfortunately that person just breaks down and that's when I just kind of clear clear the my desk and clear it and just kind of just spend that time and and unfortunately I've had to do that like you know a couple of times within the last uh, couple of months and it's and it's hard and it's hard to the day of um as well um we just had that actually this week the day of where she had to drop him off and you know she lives in our cottages um and then she had to have him and you know that's really hard and luckily we have our caregiver support group uh to help folks like that Lisa, when you initiated this conversation with your husband, I can only imagine how emotional it was. But w- were you met with some pushback from your husband by saying, oh, come on, I think you're overreacting? Y- how, yes. Yeah, I mean, how <laughs> it, it was this. And, and, I'm, and I'm sorry for it. If I'm delving too deep here, if it's too personal, let me know. And I think there's other questions I have for you. But. Uh, uh, were was this uh, the only thing I have in my mind is like an intervention? Were there other family members, ki- w- uh, friends, or they there, or was this more one on one? And I did this start an argument where what in the world are you saying? You know, or how okay. did this go down? That's a lot of questions, but I'm I'll sorry. try to remember them all. <laughs> I know. First of all, um, we did not argue very much at all. Peter was of the belief that. He would say constantly, happy wife, happy life. So, no, there was no arguing. <laughs> if I <laughs> if I said something's wrong, you're going to the doctor, he was like, okay. And he would, and he said to his PCP, she thinks there's something wrong. You know, and that well, was... Well, nobody likes going to the doctor, especially being told they got to go to the doctor. <laughs> right. So it wasn't an intervention at all. It was just me, you know, loving, loving Peter and taking good care of him. Any pushback? No, nothing at all. He was nothing. just so compliant. Where nothing. that guy, happy wife, happy life. I'll, I'll, I'll go. But there wasn't like really. He, 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 was, was he? In a, I think was he in agreement? I think that he felt there was some things wrong with him as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and even after the diagnosis, which was a year and some months later, after we just went to our PCP. Um, it was almost a year after that that he re- that he you know he retired quote unquote and there was such a relief in him that he declined very swiftly and I think he was just he had this masquerade that he was trying to uphold and defend himself and pretend like there was nothing wrong so much so that when he retired it was just he he just breathed you know mm. was the decline rapid. Rapid, mm-hmm. from diagnosis to death, three years and eight months. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I think with early onset, it moves fast, very fast. Yeah. I was that was my next question for you. Actually, yeah. is this typical? I mean, yeah. because that sounds yeah. a little on the on the too yeah. quick side. Yeah. yeah, and it is sad because it does happen very quickly. I just think of Reagan. I, I read his. I mean, I read a lot of presidential biographies, autobiographies, and and so on and so forth. And and from the time that he announced that he had Alzheimer's in the early 90s to the time that he passed away, I think that was 2004. I mean, a decade had gone by from the time that he announced it to the time that he had passed away. So I'm thinking, sadly, it's a slow, drawn-out demise. Mm -hmm. You're telling me three years. That sounds, wow, that sounds extremely rapid. Right. But to clarify, so three years and eight months from diagnosis to death. I got you. A year before was the initial visit to the PCP. And there were signs before, those signs that we discussed about losing your phone wallet keys and things like that. So I would say from the first, very first sign in hindsight, 
eight to ten years. All right, then I guess that's and people right do on. go undiagnosed for a while. Many people, when they come into the community to have a tour, they sit down and I'm like, well, do you have a diagnosis? And a lot of times there's that fear of going to the doctor. And I tell them, you know, you have to get a diagnosis so we know how to help. Um, because you don't know how to help if you don't do that. So I'll send them to UConn or someplace like that to, you know, get the uh, proper care that they need. What are the signs? I, is it is it st- usually language or is it, and I don't want to speak so, you know, typical, oh, I forgot my keys. I mean, anybody can forget their keys. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean you've got Alzheimer's. It doesn't even have, mean you've got memory loss. It's we're, we're all inundated with so many different outside, you know, media and and. So many things, so many more now, I think, than ever trying to grab and fight for our attention. But what how do you discern what's just ah, a normal I'm being forgetful and something that may be more serious? What are the signs that we should be looking for? I feel like it's instinctual. You know, if you feel like something's wrong, then something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but for Peter, it was a lot of his short term memory. And he I would find him saying, oh, right, 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 right. You know often because I would have to remind him or say, oh, we are going here or, you know, this person did this and just repeating myself a lot. Um, And he wouldn't remember things that we had on our schedule or people who I was talking about. So he acknowledged a lot of this. Yes. In agreement with you. Yes. Did he show concern? Yes. There was a he went through a a very emotional period of uh, six to 12 months, I would say, where he was constantly crying just because he could see what was happening. He knew what was happening and he was very sad for us. How did this affect you? Oh, I was, uh, wow, completely grief stricken because the one thing that people don't understand about the caregiver is that she or he is already mourning the loss of their loved one because we're caring for a body, a vessel. And the person that we married or the person that we love is no longer there Mm -hmm. because they're just dissipating in front of our eyes. So it's ambiguous grief. And we do a lot of the grieving before, you know, their bodies die. Mm -hmm. Folks, you are listening to your next chapter, uh, Senior Living, um, from presented to you by the Heights at Avery Heights, along with Siobhan Seferelli. I'm Gary Byron. Our guest, Uh, This morning is Lisa Marshall, who has authored a book, Oh, Hello, Alzheimer's, A Caregiver's Journey of Love. Uh, You could pick this book up, I would presume, wherever you normally or typically purchase books, whether it's Amazon or Barnes & Noble or uh, whatnot. Uh, um, Lisa, how about like maybe some tips that you can give to others who suspect that a, a loved one may have some memory loss issues? Yeah, I think you need to start with your primary care physician. Uh, that's the very first step. Um, you know, who, and typically, I know when we went to, to Peter's doctor, I wanted three things. I wanted, um, I wanted an MRI because I thought it was something, you know, not Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted some blood work. And I wanted a neuro consult. And so we did walk out of there with those three things. Mm-hmm. And that's really what started the ball rolling for us. Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. And I think, and maybe you can both speak to this, quite often in the vernacular, people just use them interchangeably. Oh, they must have Alzheimer's. Remember remember years ago, oh, you were senile. You're going senile. That's a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many years back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I think our generation can can, uh, identify with that term because it was used constantly as well. But going back to the the term of uh, the diagnosis, if you will, of Alzheimer's, it's one form of dementia, but truth be told is that it's under really the um, under the umbrella of dementia. There's other forms of dementia as well. What specifically are the qualifications of Alzheimer's, and how do we differentiate that from other forms of dementia? Hmm. Um, I think the the standard is the plaques that are tangling the brain, amyloid and tau proteins, I think. Um, I'm no doctor, of course. No, but. no, but, but, you, but you've been educated a lot more with yeah. this than yeah. certainly I have. So. Yeah, and one of the tests that they did when we went to Peter's neurologist was they did a spinal tap to check the levels of those two proteins, and you know they, they were in alignment with the diagnosis, and that's how they did come to the diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Yeah. In, in, in At the Heights... Do you notice a difference between those who have uh, uh, Alzheimer's and those who have a different form of dementia? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I, I think, um, and again, I'm not a medical either, but either like Lewy body or uh, mm. those types of dementias, um, I know that there's a lot more behaviors. 
um, you know, people are, they really lose their inhibitions and they kind of will, you know, sometimes someone who never swore in their life maybe and all of a sudden mom is just <laughs> like a, a sailor all of a right, sudden. It's right. kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, or, you know, so it's, th- that's tough for people or they're throwing things or they're just angry. Um, and that happens a lot of times where, like she was saying, the hardening of uh, certain parts of the brain, um, it becomes the behaviors are a lot more intense uh, than um, with others. Are there effective treatments? I mean, there's no cure. We know that. But what can the medical society, what can, or families even, what can we do to make sure that, you know, the individual is as comfortable and, and, and that they're being at least somewhat attended to? Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, it's so sad to watch. Um, we had one woman, um, unfortunately, it was brought on because of alcohol use uh, for substance abuse. Sometimes people get dementia from that. Is that right? Um, and it just was so sad to watch. I mean, she she could not sit still. It was probably the saddest thing I ever saw. And she was the sweetest lady. I remember she was just walking and walking. And at one point, you know, every once in a while I would stop her and walk with her. And she just that calmed her down but there was just no way to calm her down and unfortunately I mean she would she couldn't even sit down to eat I mean she was that nervous and that just just agitated um and unfortunately you know she ended up uh, passing but to 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 comfort someone like that is very it's just very challenging and it's very sad um to watch and to see for me it's um just joining their journey wherever they wherever they are because their perception is typically skewed mm-hmm. um and to argue or say no 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 it's oh, not gosh, monday yeah. it's tuesday oh. or no that's not your sister that's your mother it, it, it's just you're only going yeah. to create stress and elevate agitation so just joining them wherever they are making them feel confident and safe is yeah. really so important. I totally agree with that. That is the saddest thing to watch when unfortunately a caregiver is so frustrated with their loved one and they're trying to convince them, you know, try to make them eat or try to convince them, you know, of the day. Remember you used to like this or or when they're trying to have them guess their name. (sighs) That is the like one of the things I learned uh, from some of the training is that, you know, you introduce yourself and you introduce at at work all the time. I'm introducing myself to the people and I'll say, oh, you know, I'm Siobhan or I'm Sibby. I'm the director of marketing. And, you know, I might have done it yesterday, but it's so important to introduce yourself. Sometimes I think the family members are suffering more than the actual. Yeah. Well, the loss, like like she was saying, that grief starts early. Um, And I think there are, you know, have some support groups for that as well, you know, because that grief doesn't start. It starts at that okay. diagnosis. Are there so then? Let's. Let, I want to take that further. Are there resources available for the for the early stages hmm. of diagnosis? Yeah. As far as medications, any resource like that's available. You mentioned well. groups. Yep. There there's is. support groups, but I, I mean, yeah, medications. Is there anything? And what mm. are they? Sure. Yeah. There's support groups. There are day uh, daycare type centers where. You know, people with Alzheimer's can go and be in a a safe community where they are led to different activities. You know, Mm -hmm. Peter Peter went to one for a little while as long as he could. But you know, for the family, the family really desperately needs support, and it's hard to convince the family that they do need the support. Yeah, Yeah. I would imagine. I mean, it's just you you probably. I don't know what your background. If you had any background in caregiving, but. Oh my goodness! You have to learn to be a caregiver, you know, pretty much overnight. And if you weren't a caregiver before, you have to certainly be one, right? You know, at at that point in time. Yeah. Um, we've only got a few minutes left. Any advice? Any advice that you can offer our listeners to, not just how to stay positive, but you know, maybe even in in terms of uh, the disease itself. Hmm. Um, you know, the disease is going to really wreck you. It is well, emotionally, physically. I was never so exhausted in my life. Hmm. Um, but you, self care is the most important thing. So, um, if you if the caregiver is trying to provide care from an empty cup they're not going to be as kind and patient as they could be. Mm-hmm. So I developed four A's, and this is this is just like my mantra. <laughs> so A, you have to accept help when people ask, ask you, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And secondly, um, you have to ask for help if no one's helping you. Ask for what you need. Third, articulate exactly what you need. I need to go get a shower. I need a nap. I need to take a walk outside this house. I need somebody to cook me a meal, something that will help and support you. I'm a very independent soul, so I needed a fourth A, and I thought maybe there were others that did too. And so that's the word actually. So when someone would say to me, 
can I help you with anything? Instead of saying, no, 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 I'm good, I made myself, I demanded that I use the word actually. So it helped me stay accountable. So can I help you with something? Actually, nice. and I always had a list of things that I could just ask in, for. In just a few seconds, Siobhan, how does a caregiver, a spouse at home, know that it's time for them to maybe move into a memory care unit at a senior living facility? Yeah, that's a great question. That's exactly what she's saying when you had your cup is empty. And it's so important. That's one of the things I love about the book is that um, she really emphasizes that the caregiver has to take care of themselves. So many times we see that caregiver, unfortunately, passing away or getting sick prior you know before the person that has Alzheimer's or dementia and then you know one of the things it's always good to do is to go to that senior living community so that if they do you know unfortunately get diagnosed with something that's uh, terminal they will get that support Um, we just had back in December we had a lovely couple and she went on hospice she passed away and now he is part of the community he has dementia and you know he's living a great life so I think that's really important that caregiver take care of yourself Mm -hmm. yeah uh, really quickly, in a, in a minute or less, how therapeutic was it for you mm-hmm. Ex- writing, the, writing this book? Extremely cathartic. There were days that I couldn't write at all and days that I would write for eight hours, but it would it just spewed out of me sometimes. And I, I've read the book again several times. And Do you I, relive it every time that, that you read it? I read it differently. Oh. And now I read it with joy mm. and good memories, mm. you know, as I've kind of done a lot of introspective healing. I'll bet. And, and finally, as a, when a person reads this book, if there's one thing that you hope that they take out of it, it I, there's a lot to remember in, in any book, really, that, mm-hmm. that you read. But if, boy, if someone says, you know what, what I, you know what I took out from this book that really resonated with me, what would it be for this book? Oh, that's book? easy. So it's my, it's fine joy and have Love no that. regrets. Right so, here my paper. I'm yeah, so she yeah. said that. <laughs> Find joy, have no That's regrets. Awesome. Find joy no matter what. You know, those dishes in the sink are going to pile up and those fur balls are going to float across <laughs> your floor. You're not going to miss those later, but you're going to miss the hand that you're holding. How can people obtain this book really quickly? Yep, on Amazon. They can go on and just search for Oh Hello Alzheimer's in books or on my Facebook blog titled the same thing, Oh Hello Alzheimer's. They could buy autographed copies there. Wonderful. The name of the book is Oh Hello Alzheimer's, A Caregiver's Journey of Love. The author of the book, our guest this morning, Lisa Marshall. Thank you for being with us Thank this you morning, so Lisa. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, it's, it's absolutely essential. Folks, you've been listening to the latest edition of Your Next Chapter, Senior Living with Siobhan Seffarelli, uh, the Heights Senior Living Specialist. Avery Heights is a beautiful senior living community nestled within 43 acres of nature right in the heart of the junction between West Hartford, Newington, in Hartford, and those who live there have access to a full continuum of care, including independent and assisted living to memory care and a whole lot more. Visit AveryHeights.org or call 860-953-1201. Again, it's 860-953-1201 to learn more about their own special brand of community, unlike any other in Connecticut. For Siobhan Seffarelli, I'm Gary Byron. Thank you so much for listening. Until next Saturday morning, have a good one, everybody. So long.